people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Kunana with another episode of South Asia Focus. And let's begin the show. India has kick-started administering booster doses to its frontline workers and elderly with comorbidities as COVID infection rate spikes multifold in the past two weeks. With a target population of around 57 million, experts believe the government should be able to inoculate all of them with what it calls the precaution dose in a few weeks. India is once again registering an overwhelming everyday COVID count like it did in its second wave in April and May. But with a far lower was severity, hospitalization and mortality rate. A report. India has started vaccinating its frontline workers and vulnerable elderly as the Omicron variant has fueled nearly tenfold rise in daily infections in the past two weeks. In this new phase, only healthcare personnel, other frontline workers and people over the age of 60 and suffering from other health conditions are eligible for what the government calls a precaution dose. As per the Federal Health Ministry, an estimated 10.5 million healthcare, 19 million frontline workers and 27.5 million comorbid people in the 60-plus age group would be administered the booster. The government is doing a good job for us. We are senior citizens. We got the first dose of the first dose. And now we are giving the first dose of the first dose. Now we are giving the first dose of the first dose. While a sudden spike in the infected numbers has caused concerns among many, Omicron, a relatively less threatening variant, taking over Delta as the most prevalent variant in the country, has provided a sigh of relief across the health spectrum. And with pharma companies putting their weight behind booster dose, Indian authorities too have urged every vulnerable citizen of the country to get himself jabbed. Meanwhile, India's indigenous vaccine developer Bharat Biotech has claimed that the booster dose of Covaxin is effective against both Delta and Omicron. Despite having one of the largest eligible populations to be jabbed, India has out-vaccinated several of the European countries and the USA. The authorities are now ensuring that the vulnerable receive further immunity in their fight against the pandemic. All the healthcare workers who are involved in the treatment of the corona patients in the hospital who are prone to get the corona infection, it is advocated to take the a booster dose or a precautionary dose after the nine months after the second dose. And uh, we are starting here. Uh, today and tomorrow we will uh, give the booster dose, booster dose for all the healthcare workers including the doctors, paramedical staff, nurses, house surgeons, PGs, um, security and sanitary patients. Although the situation has not become as grim as the second wave, the government of India is claiming to be prepared for a further rise that is predicted to peak in mid-February. The health ministry, which has cautioned citizens to be more assertive, has also said the country has also reported a low hospitalization, even lesser than half of what is reported during the second wave. A little over 5% of patients since the first case of Omicron was detected have sought hospitalization, compared with 20% to 23% during the Delta-driven last wave. Authorities in the cities of Delhi and Mumbai and major Indian cities say most people have shown no or only minor symptoms and have recovered quickly at home. Vaccine ka bahati badia effect hum dekh rahe hain. इतने सारे केस बढ़ने के बावजूद भी एडमिशन बहुत कम है हमने भी सुना है आपने भी सुना होगा कि करीबन 1.5 परसेंट एडमिशन रेट है बाकी सारे लोग बोलेंगे कि होम आइसोलेशन में हैं और होम आइसोलेशन से एडमिशन होने का भी अभी कोई इतना इंक्रीज ट्रेंड नहीं दिख रहा है मतलब सारे लोग घर पे ठीक हो रहे हैं 
तो ये एक बहुत बड़ी अच्छी बात है Apart from a rapid vaccination drive and boosters for its frontline lot, the government is also taking several measures, including the night and weekend curfews, to reduce the speed of the infection. In order to prevent mass gatherings, the Election Commission of India has prohibited large rallies and has urged the political parties to shift their campaigning for five poll-bound states to digital platforms. The union and state governments have so far dismissed the idea of a complete lockdown in order to prevent an economic slowdown that had severely hit the market in 2020 and several thousands were rendered jobless. And the intent of the government has been clearly reflected in its strenuous vaccination drive with relentless information campaigns that have kept the per capita infection ratio of the world's second most populous country way below others which include even the most developed economies and moving on the other south asian countries too have stepped up their vaccination drive in order to protect their citizens from new variants and waves the himalayan nation nepal too has started inoculating children it has also expanded the curbs in order to break the infection chain and flatten the curve The previous delta wave in the country has strained the health system of the country which the authorities are working to prevent a repeat of a report. The Himalayan country of Nepal has launched the vaccination drive for its children aged between 12 and 17 amid a spike in the cases of the fast spreading omicron variant of the covid-19. students queued up outside schools to get their first jab the decision of vaccinating children of a particular age group was taken after a number of cases were reported from this group unlike the early days of the pandemic outbreak when the children were mildly affected the new variants have been infecting the adolescents and infants too school students say they are no less worried after the vaccination अब हम डर चाहे धेरे कम भग क्यों अब भैक्सिन लगाई सके हम रिस्क एकदम कम भो रिस्क कम भैस अब बाटो में हिड़ा खास डर भैन हमला अब तेरे नई कम भाषा भन Nepal has also banned large public gatherings and closed schools across the Himalayan nation for nearly three weeks. authorities hope the closure of schools will help break chains of infection amid fears about the rapid spread of the omicron variant of the virus the education ministry however said the campaign to vaccinate children aged 12 to 17 at their schools would continue despite closure ani aru bhaneko ab vaccine lai sakepachi ke hard samma ta सुरक्षित होने बच्चा में आत्मा बल बढ़ ताकि अब हम ठूल ली सके तो हमें ली सकता भैक्सिन लिया जति अब कोरोना भैया भी कम्प्लिकेटेड होते हैं भाई खाल मेसेज तो ये आई रहना भाई हमें ये अनुसार उ जानकारी दी रह The country is reporting an overwhelming number of cases with daily spike crossing the previous single day records. The Himalayan nation has also reported over 11,600 fatalities till date. The country has so far provided two shots of COVID-19 vaccines to 37% of its population to 30 million since an inoculation drive began a year ago. Nepal's home ministry said public gatherings like political rallies and religious functions involving more than 25 people had been prohibited. सरकारले जुन यो निर्णय गर्न लागेको छ यो कन्ट्रोल गर्नलाई चेन ब्रेक गर्नलाई भनौँ है जुन भ्याक्सिन सरी भाइरस ट्रान्समिसनको जुन चेन ब्रेक गर्नलाई भनिएको छ त्यसको लागि चाहिँ आएर गर्न लागेको यो चाहिँ एउटा सिफारिस चाहिँ आएर एक हिसाबले चाहिँ आएर संक्रमण रो दर चाहिँ आएर कम गर्नलाई राम्रो हो Last week the government asked hospitals to prepare for increased numbers of patients as covid-19 cases could increase sharply. Nepal has so far reported only a few dozen omicron cases with fatality figures under 10. But Kathmandu say it is not going to take this variant lightly and will take all measures to keep it in check. 
And now let's move to Afghanistan. Five months after sweeping to power, the Taliban is now seeking an active role in distributing the international aid it is likely to receive from different global bodies and the United States in coming months. After the United Nations appeal of over $4 billion aid this week, the Taliban has proposed a joint body in order to coordinate the allocation and distribution of the amount. The Taliban has yet not received the kind of legitimacy it has sought from the international community and has been reaching out to global global powers for the same. The Taliban, which toppled the Western-backed government in August last year to gain control of Kabul, has proposed a joint body of its officials and international representatives to coordinate the billions of dollars of aid it is expected to receive in coming months. Although it has not been made clear by the United Nations and other foreign governments whether they will be backing such an agreement as it would provide Taliban the access to large funds, which the international community has been particularly apprehensive about since their takeover of Kabul. The Taliban, however, are confident that they are ready to take charge of the country in all aspects. این گرد همایی زمین سازی نخستین گفتمان مستقیم میان دستندرکاران ارشد نیادهای بین المللی و مقامات ارشد امارت اسلامی افغانستان در راستای هماهنگی و دیالوگ روی اولویتهای اقتصادی و بشری می باشد همکاری امارت اسلامی افغانستان با شرایط با سازمان ملل متحد در این شرایط نشاندهنده یک مشارکت بی سابقه میان حکومت و نهادهای کمکرسان می باشد. Western sanctions aimed at the Taliban also prevented the passage of basic supplies of food and medicine, although this has eased after exemptions were passed by the UN Security Council and Washington in December. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, while requesting an integrated support for the people of the war-torn country, also urged the Taliban to refrain from exercising an absolutist administration that has snatched rights of millions of women and young girls. As I appeal to the international community to step up support for the people of Afghanistan, I make an equally urgent plea to the Taliban leadership to recognize and protect fundamental human rights, and in particular, the rights of women and girls. Across Afghanistan, Women and girls are missing from offices and classrooms. A generation of girls is seeing its hopes and dreams shattered. Women scientists, lawyers and teachers are locked out, wasting skills and talents that will benefit the entire country and indeed the world. No country can thrive while denying the rights of half of its population. An abrupt withdrawal of foreign aid last year following the hasty U.S. exit and Taliban victory in August left Afghanistan's fragile economy on the brink of collapse, with food prices rising rapidly and causing widespread hunger. Some $9.5 billion in Afghan central bank reserves remain blocked outside the country, mainly in the United States, and international support given to the previous government has dried up since the Taliban seized power last August. And after facing several warnings that millions could starve as the economic crisis intensifies, they are ramping up humanitarian aid but have expressed their skepticism at the government interfering in the process. Earlier in the week, the United Nations asked donors for $4.4 billion in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan in 2022 and the White House announced it would donate an extra $308 million. Taliban, on the other side, has asked the international community to provide it more than just humanitarian assistance as it says the country's institutions are on the verge of collapse and economic recovery of the country would require much more than what is being offered. 
خواستار آغاز فعالیت های انکشافی سایر مؤسسات به شمول بانک جهانی در افغانستان هستیم و باور ما بایی است که کمک های انکشافی کافی کمک های بشر دوستانه کافی نیست و بدیل بسیار خوب رشد فعالیت اقتصادی و کمک های انکشافی است. The previous Taliban regime of 1996 to 2001 had provided shelter to terrorist groups including Al-Qaeda and that has been center of concern for international community including the United States even today. They fear a return of a similar regime would not just internally destabilize the country but would also pose a major threat to the global peace and security and the developments that have come at a cost of thousands of human lives and trillions of dollars will reverse to square one. And now in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that hit the headlines this week. When Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station was launched by Tokyo Electric Power Company TEPCO, many options for disposal of stored ALPS-treated water were studied by a special independent subcommittee of experts. Finally, it was concluded that discharge into the sea could be implemented more responsibly. How was this concluded? Professor Hiroshi Tauchi looks back on the careful examinations. その 5 つ、それからもう一つが水蒸気として放出する。で、あるいは水素として放出する。それから地層注入、あるいは地層埋設という、ま、5つの選択肢を、あの提案をして、あの、終わったところでございます。小委員会の場では、特にですね、ま、社会的
β 線という透過性が非常に低い放射線を放出しますトリチウムっていうのは天然にももともと存在する物質でしたがって我々が普段から飲むお水とかもっと言うならば我々の体の中にもあのトリチウムっていうのは存在するわけですね。原発の状況を見るとアルプス処理をすることで簡単に言うならばトリチウム以外の放射性物質は取り除けるしかしトリチウム水を取り除くというのは水の中から水を取り出すようなものなんですね。でこれは原理的にできない、まあ、そうするとこれを何らかの方法で放出しない限りはタンクの中にトリチウム水がまあ溜まり続けるということになるわけですね。海に流すこれによる影響というのは極めて極めて少ないです。総合的に考えるならば適切な形でまあ海洋放出をするというのがですね最も合理的な選択ではないかな Being expert in radiology, Professor Kechi mentions that the Japanese standard for sea discharge is very safe. The process of decommissioning is undertaken with utmost carefulness and mutual understanding of all stakeholders. Courier services company DHL Express has opened the Middle East's largest robotic sorting center in central Israel as it tries to keep pace with the country's growing economy. Had it not made the $80.38 million investment in the facility near Ben Gurion Airport, the company said it would not have been able to keep up with the pace of orders in Israel. A hundred conveyor belts sort 20,000 packages in an hour, roughly five times more than before. Matching the most advanced centers in Europe. A cargo plane can now be handled in 50 minutes instead of 4 hours. The automated sorting system requires 70% less manpower, so employees have been trained for other roles, DHL said. And moving on, each time around the dawn of the new year, India's Himachal Pradesh gets ready to welcome the oncoming year with a plomb and festivities. The five day long Manali Winter Carnival that offers the most unique and exciting cultural experiences tops the list. Let's take a look at this year's event that presented the local culture and lifestyle at its best. Manali, the resort town in Himachal Pradesh, got dipped in colors of joy and festivity. As it hosted its annual winter carnival. A folk dance, Kulvi Nati, performed by around 3,000 women, was the highlight at the national level winter carnival. Dressed in traditional attires, women from around 75 women organizations presented the folk dance, giving the message of women empowerment. Performances by artists from different parts of the state and country were another major draw. Performers from Punjab, Haryana, Jammu and Kashmir, and many more states amused the spectators with their dance presentations on new and old film songs. A fashion show in traditional dresses by women remained a center of attraction among the locals and tourists alike. यहाँ पर विंटर कार्निवल में हमने अपनी प्रस्तुति दे दी है यहाँ पर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट डिस्ट्रिक्ट और अलग अलग स्टेट से भी लोग आए हुए हैं यहाँ पर मतलब कल्चर एक्सचेंज हो रहा है तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है मनाली की जनता भी हमें काफ़ी प्यार दे रही है The carnival concluded with a beauty pageant where a total of 25 contestants from all over the country participated. Donning beautiful attires, beauties dazzled on the ramp, redefining elegance. In the final round, winners were announced and honored with respective titles. मुझे विंटर क्वीन 2022 में फर्स्ट रनर अप का टाइटल मिला है जिसके लिए मैं बहुत ज़्यादा खुश हूँ और मैं इधर स्टेज के बारे में एंड कंपटीशन के बारे में बोलना चाहूँगी कि इट वाज वेरी टफ सारे राउंड्स ही बहुत टफ थे सारे कंटेस्टेंट्स भी बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छे थे जिसके वजह से कॉम्पिटिशन बहुत ज़्यादा टफ हो गया था एज़ कम्पेयर टू लाइक मैं मध्य प्रदेश भोपाल से आई हूँ इतने दूर से आई हूँ 
तो मेरे को बहुत अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली है इधर पे बहुत अच्छा स्टेज था इधर पे और मैं कोशिश करूँगी कि मेरे को और मैं इसके बाद और कॉम्पिटिशन्स करूँ और आगे बढ़ूँ और अपने आप को सक्सेसफुल बनाऊँ Regarded as the largest tourism event of Himachal Pradesh, Winter Carnival not just attract tourists to Kullu and Manali during the off season, but also promote the folk culture and provide a platform to artists. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.